So we're gonna make the stitched card. This is my stitched card. You just about make out the colors. For this uh, card, you're going to need your stitched card kit. You're gonna need some scissors, um, a print stick, glue stick any sort, and some sellotape. Okay, to make the stitched card, let's open up the kit. In the kit, you will have uh, the card outer and an envelope and a piece of silver mirror card a piece of white plain paper or card a piece of black paper or card and a template you'll also find your needle some threads and your uh, a, a small pin push pin for now, all we're going to need is the push pin, the black card, and you need to find yourself something that you can poke into. I've just got the back of an old mouse mat. You could just use a tea towel like this that the pin can go into. And what you want to do is you want to Put the template on top of the black card and line it up. What you then want to do is go round and poke the pin through each dot and all the way around into the black card to poke holes into the black card. So the next thing we need to do, once we have punched all of our holes in our black card, is to cut a length of the blue thread. And we're going to split the blue thread into two strands. Now, this embroidery thread has got six strands, so you need to pull the thread apart until you've got three strands on each side. And then just slowly and gradually pull this apart until you've got two pieces of three ply thread. You then need to thread your needle. Okay, and we're ready to start sewing. So you'll notice that on the black card, one side will have raised bumps and the other side will be smooth. So the smooth side is your front. You want to go in from the back on any of the dots and pull your thread through until you only have a tiny bit left on the wrong side. And then just to make sure that stays there, I'm going to use some sellotape and I'm just sellotaping that down. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start sewing. So I'm going to sew, this is the inner circle, this one's going to be smaller in the middle. So that means there's a larger number of dots in between. So if for example I choose there, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go every fifteenth hole. But in actual fact, you don't need to count them. I've done one. What I now need to do is go up on the hole right beside it. Pull it through. And this time when I sew across, I'm, I'm going to go to the hole. I've come up on the hole to the right. I'm going to go down on the hole to the left. So I'm crossing over. Okay. Now this time I'm going to go up the hole beside it.
and this time I'm crossing over to this one. So you don't need to count the, the gaps between, you just always go to the hole beside the one that you just uh, went down. So up on the right, down on the hole to the left. And you'll find you don't get to do many of these before you've run out of thread. So when we run out of thread, we're going to thread our needle again. And then on the back, where our thread ran out, We're going to put our new thread beside it. We need about three hands for this. And then we're just going to sellotape those side by side. It's going to start to look a bit messy on the back, but that really doesn't matter. So then we're going back up next to it and we just continue where we left off. Now, obviously, this thread's going to run out just as quickly. When this thread runs out, just cut a new piece of thread, split it into the two pieces like we did before, and carry on sewing. So I'm going to finish this one off, and then I'll come back to you when I'm nearly done. Okay, I just want to show you at this point, um, when I do this with children, a lot of the children, when they do this next one and they get back to the starting hole, so they've, they've in effect gone all the way around the circle, they tend to think that they've finished because they've met up back up with the original hole again, but they haven't because you can see this bit is where the pattern is forming. This is an incomplete pattern around here. So even when you've met back up with where you started, you do need to keep going, so keep going to the next hole on. And round, and keep that pattern going. One other thing to mention is that when you do your, um, when you do each stitch, be careful that you don't pull too tight and pucker the card. You want to keep it nice and tight but not overly tight so that the card doesn't buckle. So now that I've gone all the way around the outside of the circle, I know I've finished because each, uh, each point on the circle has got a little uh, point from the snowflake on it and I've made the, the center circle in the middle. I now just finish off by snipping off my thread at the back and I'm just going to anchor that with a bit of tape. And you can see that the back is starting to look quite messy with lots of bits of tape and leftover bits of thread. That doesn't matter because that's going to be hidden at the end. That's the side that you want to see. So now that we've done that inner uh, pattern, we're going to do an outer pattern using the white thread. So I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to cut a piece of white thread. I'm going to split it in half thread my needle and start to sew. Okay, so I'm ready to throw, sew with a white thread. I've anchored it on the back. And this time, what I'm going to do is I'm not gonna do as many, uh, I'm not gonna leave as many holes between my stitches. Before I left 15, this time I'm gonna leave, say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I'm going to leave 11 holes so go down on the 11th hole there it doesn't really matter you can see from where this is that's going to be the size of your outer circle okay and then we do exactly the same as we did before we come up the hole beside it we 
What I try and do is on your last one, you do, you can see where you've got your stitches going across. I try to do my white thread going the one in between, just so that my card doesn't get too bulky on the back. So up that one, down the opposite side of the thread. Up the hole beside that one. Again, pull tight, but not too tight. And down this side. And just like before, we're gonna keep sewing until our thread runs out. When our thread runs out, I'm gonna anchor the thread with some sellotape. I'm gonna tape on a new piece of thread after I've re-threaded my needle, and I'm gonna carry on sewing. So when you've been around with both colours, with the blue and the white, you're now finished the front of the card. The back of the card is going to have a lot of sellotape on, a lot of tails of thread. That's fine. Now, depending on how many holes you missed, you might have a pattern that looks like that. Or you might have one that's more like that. What we need to do now is we need to mount these onto our card. So we're going to take the blue card and fold that in half. It's ready scored for you, so you should just be able to fold it. Okay. And we're going to take our mirror card next and just use Pritt stick on the back of your mirror card. and stick the mirror card onto the front and center it. Okay, it's so mirrored you can actually see my phone in it, I'm recording. And then the same with the stitched piece, just print stick right into the corners. You can also use double-sided tape for this. So in the middle as well and then we're just going to stick that again centrally as we can onto the middle of our mirror card and there's the front of our card completed and then because we're using a dark colored card a white piece of paper that is in your kit if you use a bit of print stick and glue that into the middle and then you'll have a, a space to write on and then these are a little bit big but give you lots of room in case your card's bulky you put your envelope for your card and that is our stitched card